This project was made possible with the support of Open Sailing, an initiative by the software development company Dockyard. A huge thanks for their help. You can find links to their sites in the description below. Open Sailing is a collection of projects, currently under development, designed to provide resources for learning about competitive and general sailing. As part of their research, they are exploring various approaches to developing race optimization algorithms for sailboats. This project fits into the broader goal of exploring different ways to tackle this challenge. In this initial version, a race is defined by a starting position, a finish point, and in between, a series of checkpoints. These checkpoints must be cleared in sequential order, with the ultimate goal being to reach the finish line as quickly as possible. Boats move through the environment by adjusting their angular velocity to change their orientation. Currently, their linear speed remains constant, since we will start by ignoring wind effects. In this simplified scenario, each agent's perception is limited to the direction to the next checkpoint. To ensure that observations and controls operate within the same coordinate system, we project this direction into the boat's local reference frame. To do this, we simply calculate the dot product of the direction with each axis. This animation illustrates the same projection, but from the boat's perspective. Driving each boat is a small neural network. It uses the observations to estimate the optimal angular velocity for reaching the checkpoints. These networks have two inputs, corresponding to the projections discussed earlier. Next come the hidden neurons, which are added incrementally as training progresses. Finally, a single output enables the network to control the boat's direction. Now that we've seen the basic concepts, let's see how this plays out on this simple race. 4000 boats, each with a different neural network, will try to finish the race as quickly as possible. At the start, the networks are completely random, which is why most of the agents behave erratically. The algorithm I'm using here is extremely simple, almost a naive approach. It works by evaluating the agents on the task to optimize, selecting the best performers and then randomly modifying them. This process is then repeated until a satisfactory solution is found. I'll put in the description a link to a video where I explain this algorithm in details. Regarding the evaluation, the faster the boats reach a checkpoint, the more points they earn. Crossing the finish line awards a massive bonus, which also scales based on performance. In this case, the problem is so simple that after just the first iteration, most of the agents are already able to finish the race. Taking a closer look at the best agent, we see that its neural network is extremely simple, featuring just one connection linking the normal projection to the angular velocity. This isn't particularly surprising. In fact, an elegant and simple way to orient an object is to apply a rotation proportional to the dot product between the target direction and the current heading's normal. If we then apply forward motion, you naturally get a tracker that steers relentlessly toward its target, exactly like our boat. This first step confirms that the simulation works, but it's not very interesting on its own. To make things a bit more challenging, we are now going to factor in the influence of the wind. Simulating the interactions between a sailboat and the wind is extremely complex. To simplify things, we'll use a tool well known to sailors, a polar diagram. It provides a theoretical estimate of the maximum speed a boat can reach depending on its angle to the wind. In our simulation, we'll simply use the value from the polar directly as the boat's speed. In practice, this polar diagram depends on each specific boat model and remains an approximation. Nevertheless, 
It provides results that are consistent with real-world behavior. For this first step, this approximation will do the trick. The agents will now also have the wind's relative velocity as part of their observations. Just like with the checkpoints, it will be projected into the boat's reference frame. Let's restart the training on the same map, this time with wind. An indicator displaying the wind force vector throughout the race is located in the top left corner. Reaching the first five checkpoints isn't difficult because the boats never end up sailing directly into the wind. But the next one is a different story, and that's where things fall apart. Boats that used to be able to pass through without any trouble now find themselves completely stuck here. Let's continue the training to see how the boats adapt to this new constraint. We have to wait until iteration 6 before the situation improves a bit, even though the trajectory found is far from optimal. At iteration 7, checkpoint 9 is reached, but the finish line is still tricky because it requires sailing a long stretch upwind. Finally, at generation 31, one boat manages to complete the course in 891 seconds. Let's take a closer look. What immediately stands out to me, and what always impresses me with this algorithm, is how compact the generated networks are. The solution is far from perfect, and the boat is obviously wasting a lot of time making unnecessary turns but the controller network has only two hidden neurons and barely a dozen connections. Currently, boats come to an abrupt stop when they're heading directly into the wind. This happens because the polar diagram is being used directly as the boat speed. It's something I definitely plan to improve. Let's resume the training to see how the solution evolves and improves over the next iterations. Starting around iteration 55, the trajectory begins to look reasonably close to optimal, with seemingly few unnecessary maneuvers. However, the score keeps improving, so let's see how far the boats can go. Iteration 146 is when they finally dip below 650 seconds. Since the first successful run, the boats have already shaved off more than 200 seconds. The networks are getting a bit larger though. Training then gradually slows down and levels off around iteration 500. So let's take a look at what this final generation looks like. The network is significantly larger than in previous iterations yet it remains a very reasonable size. The trajectory here is very smooth, with the boat wasting no time on unnecessary turns. Between checkpoints 8 and 9, there is a slight deviation in the path. I assume this is to optimize the angle with the wind, even at the expense of covering a longer distance. I find the solution satisfactory, even given the major limitations of the simulation.
Now let's load the standout generations all at once to get a clearer sense of the overall progression. There's a really huge gap between generations 31 and 55. The difference between the first two, however, is much smaller. We can clearly see here how the progression slows down with higher iterations. Generation 146 also takes a detour between checkpoints 8 and 9, instead of keeping the wind fully at its back, but does so from the opposite side. I'm not sure which approach is best here. Generation 500, on the other hand, is far more efficient when turning into the wind, which gives it a significant lead. For now, the goal of this project is simply to find fast routes for a specific race, not to develop a general purpose AI. So the training here was focused exclusively on that particular race. Out of curiosity though, let's see whether the agents can generalize at least a little by placing them on a completely different race without any additional training. I was honestly quite surprised, I expected it to be much worse. Near the end, some of the decisions seem a bit odd, but overall the boats do a really good job. There's still a lot to improve and add, as always, but I'm happy with this first result. The next major step will be to add terrain to the simulation. You can find the source code as well as an executable of the project on my Patreon page, the link is in the description. A big thanks to Dockyard and Open Sailing for their help, and of course to all my Patreon supporters. Thank you very much for watching.